Greetings. How is your summer? Are you hanging out on the beach, going to other places for vacation, or just staying home? For my vacation, I went to Denmark, which is where I'm first in front of the Little Mermaid statue in Grand I just said the title of the movie we're reviewing today, so let's take the plunge. It's YouTube's J.B. Eagle Review. The story. Let's take a deep dive into the story in the review. The youngest of King Triton's daughters, Ariel, is a beautiful and spirited young mermaid with a thirst for adventure. Longing to find out more about the world beyond the sea, Ariel visits the surface and falls for the dashing Prince Eric. Following her heart, she makes a deal with the evil sea witch, Ursula, to experience life on land. Do you want my opinion on the film? This live-action remake was a disappointing attempt to bring a beloved Disney classic to life. It falls flat in almost every aspect, leaving me feeling overwhelmed and disconnected, unlike the original. Behind the Sea Time to swim through how the film was made. Costume designer Colleen Atwood explained why Ariel does not sport shell bras. I just think we wanted to have a more fish-like quality to the girls. Having them all plonk seashells on their breasts seems like a weird way to go. And when you start putting shells on real bodies, it's hard to make them look good, believe me. We went with a bralette that still has a fish vibe, but wasn't as aggressive as a shell bra. Three shades of red were applied on Hallie Bailey's hair, with loose pieces of hair added to allow it to float and dance underwater. Ariel now sports a more natural red hair instead of the vibrant tone from the original animation. Bailey and hairdresser Camille Friend discarded using wigs from the start in favor of featuring her natural hair as to stay true to Bailey's black heritage. Ariel's hair was made of 30-inch extensions which took 14 to 15 hours to integrate into Halle Bailey's hair. The total cost of the hair was over $150,000. The Part of Your World sequence was filmed over the course of three days. Halle Bailey described filming the segment as the most beautiful experience of my life, feeling all of the feelings that she feels, her passion, her discomfort. Everything that she was experiencing was so exciting for me to play. Just getting me to sing a song I've loved ever since I was a child was really exciting. Contrary to the animated film, Sebastian has the correct number of legs, ten including two pinchers. The animated Sebastian had eight, including the pinchers, because at that time that was much easier to animate. According to Colleen Atwood, every merperson accessory had to be from the sea. For King Triton, we were trying to figure out how to make his crown look like a crown, but not like it was a crown from above the sea. I saw these really giant shark teeth in a magazine, and I was like, oh my god, we should make his crown out of shark teeth. To prepare for her role as Ursula, Melissa McCarthy and the makeup team had to block her eyebrows, stencil penciled eyebrows in, install a wig, and add false eyelashes along with contour. Halle Bailey choked when she recreated the famous hair flip scene where Ariel swims to the surface and flips her hair after her human transformation. She nearly broke her neck because of how heavy her locks and hair extensions turned out in water. The human world was designed to look like 1830s meets Caribbean world. Director Rob Marshall's second Disney production featuring mermaids after Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tide from 2011. He had his Little Mermaid crew watching the film for reference, explaining that pirate scene already had our taste in terms of look and what you can achieve. We were explaining how we achieved it too when we were using visual effects, when we were using some kind of costumes and things like that. We just broke it down with our entire team. That was really actually helpful. 
production was temporarily halted in March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Filming resumed in early 2021 in London, England. The characters. Time for a refreshing swim in the ocean with the characters. Ariel is an independent, headstrong, and determined young mermaid. She is the youngest and prettiest princess of the sea, but spends most of her time outside the palace walls of Atlantica singing, daydreaming, and adventuring with her best friend, Flounder the Fish, and sometimes Sebastian the Crab, who is also the royal advisor to Ariel's father. She unexpectedly becomes deeply infatuated with a young and handsome human prince named Eric, and sacrifices all things dear to her for the chance of being with her one true love. Next is Eric, who is a young, dashing prince of a seaside kingdom with a passion for sailing. During one of his voyages, Eric is rescued by a mysterious girl after nearly drowning during a storm. Grateful for her heroism and enchanted by her beautiful voice, Eric immediately falls in love with his rescuer and becomes determined to find and marry her. Then there's Sebastian the Red Jamaican Accented Crab who serves as King Triton's advisor. Despite his esteemed position, Sebastian is regularly tasked with watching over Triton's youngest daughter, Princess Ariel. King Triton is the ruler of Atlantica, an undersea kingdom inhabited by merpeople. As king, he wields the all-powerful mystical trident, which grants him control over the oceans. By his late wife, he is also a widowed father to seven daughters, the most notable of which is Ariel. Equal parts overprotective and well-meaning, Triton initially disapproves of Ariel's admiration for the human world on account of his misanthropy. Last but not least, Ursula is a villainous creature who is half woman and half octopus and strikes deals with unfortunate merfolk with the promise of making her dreams come true. Ursula's contracts, however, are covertly designed to advance her own ambitions and cause general misery. In the past, Ursula was a resident of King Triton's palace before being banished and exiled by order of the king. Scorned, she has since vowed to exact vengeance by harnessing the power of the king's trident and installing herself as ruler of all the ocean. Queen Selina attributes the frequent hurricanes and shipwrecks to the sea god's fury and reacts as such when she sees Ursula and Ariel's true nature in the climax. In Once Upon a Time, Ursula was an actual sea goddess, the sea goddess of old, which was impersonated by villains Regina Mills, a.k.a. the evil queen and mermaid princess Ursula, who becomes a sea witch. Regina's impersonation refers to the original character from the animated Little Mermaid film. Ursula and Triton as siblings in this remake was cut from the 1989 animated film, but it was included in the 2007 Broadway musical of the film instead. In the musical, Triton had banished Ursula from his kingdom and disowned her as a sibling for practicing black magic, which is what motivates her actions in the Broadway musical. The names of King Triton's daughters were changed for the live-action film. Coincidentally, in the animated film, all of his daughters' names begin and end with the letter A, except for Ariel's. In this version, the sisters' names do not start with the letter A. They only end with the letter A. For the Brazilian version, voice actress Larissa Cardoso dubs Perla. Aged 14, Cardoso dubbed and sang for Melody in The Little Mermaid 2 Return to the Sea after being selected in a contest promoted by a Disney-themed TV show. The actress also voiced Isabella in the 2021 film Encanto. Scuttle is portrayed as a female northern gannet diving bird instead of a male seagull, as in the original, in order to feature the character in underwater scenes. The movie introduces original characters not seen in the animated film, including Queen Selina, portrayed by Noma Dumbeswini. Allow me to dip these facts about the film in water. The live-action remake has a couple of changes. 
Scuttle is now a female northern gannet diving bird who can go underwater and swim with Ariel. Prince Eric is adopted as his real parents died on a shipwreck and he, like Ariel, has a parent who believes they know what is best for their child. Chef Lewis in the song, Liz Possums, are omitted. Blossom and Jetson do not talk. Eric and Ariel's wedding is not shown, but they are married and travel abroad at the end. Ursula is Ariel's aunt, which was originally going to be in the animated film. Ariel and Prince Eric bond over their love for collecting treasures and bric-a-brac. While Ariel and Eric are stargazing, Eric teaches Ariel about constellations and their names. After he makes a few attempts at guessing her name, Ariel points out the constellation of Parise, and when Eric says the name, she gently shushes him with a finger, shortening it to Arai. She then playfully drags her finger down his lip as he repeats it to achieve the L sound at the end. When he finally spells it all out, he smiles and tells her it's a beautiful name. Coincidentally, Pally Bailey, who plays Ariel, her zodiac sign is Arise because she was born on March 27th. One of the arguments that backlashers of casting Halle Bailey, a black actress, as Ariel proposed was its inaccuracy in the Danish origin of the Little Mermaid tale. In response, reviewers have pointed out that indigenous and black merpeople or half-human, half-fish deities have also been represented in many cultures. For instance, African beliefs happened long before myth European mythologies were dissemented, or Hans Christian Andersen's conception of the tale. The deities, Yamoja and Mami Wata, both water spirits, are two examples. On May 5, 2023, a video of the film's trailer and its audio, specifically the portion of Halle Bailey's Ariel singing Part of Your World reprise, Playing simultaneously over the visuals of the trailer for Transformers Rise of the Beasts during a Dolby Cinema screening of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 at an AMC theater in Franklin, Tennessee, due to a film protector error, went viral on social media with users infused at the incidental crossover and noting how both trailers seemed to be perfectly in sync together as they played. When stars Halle Bailey and Melissa McCarthy introduced the live-action Little Mermaid trailer during the 2023 Oscar ceremony on ABC, a network Disney owns, filmmakers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller and others were outraged and responded on Twitter. Lord called it a blatant marketing movie that undermined the integrity of the awards program. Miller called it depressing and that it feels like it diminishes the whole enterprise. Cinco Paul simply called it gross and added boo to everyone responsible. In one scene, Scuttle, having misheard Flounder's story, asks Sebastian, has Ariel killed the prince yet? This is most likely an allusion to the original fairy tale. In the story, the nameless mermaid is destined to turn into sea foam and die after the prince marries another woman. The mermaid sisters tell her that the only way she can escape this fate is if she kills the prince with an enchanted dagger. However, the mermaid can't go through with it and instead accepts her death. When asked about possibly starring a continuation for this film, Halle Bailey and Jonah Fuhrer King actually remembered the lesser celebrated Disney sequel, The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, considering a similar plot with Ariel and Eric's daughter, Melody. Bailey was born six months before Disney released Return to the Sea. In the same interview, she added that she loved the sequel, while King joked that Eric could become a merman in a future installment. Well, gang, looks like it's time for this review to set sail for the sunset. But you know, there are lots more wonderful movies and shows to review, so be sure to join me on our next review. Until then, this is your pal, J.B. Eagle, saying, see you later.